And hello everybody, welcome back to another coding video. And today we're doing Tinker. So we're so it says coding cup right there on the top left side. And so let's begin. So let's do it. Here, the basics. Let's start. Hey soccer fans, I'm your training coach. Ready to get started? In this soccer game. You won't play with a keyboard or a game controller. You'll program a team of virtual soccer players to play the game. Enter your team into matches and watch them play and climb the leaderboard. Baiju's Coding Cup uses Tinker's visual block programming language. In Tinker, you tell the computer what to do by connecting code blocks like this. These code blocks can instruct your virtual players to move around the field or shoot the ball or even choose between actions. It's up to you to code your players so they know what to do on their turn in the game. Once all three of your teammates are coded, they can play a match together as a team. Now, let's start training your players. This game is played in turns, much like how players take turns in a board game. In each turn, a player can only do one action, such as move one grid space across the field or shoot the ball. This code block is the on turn event block. This marks the beginning of your player's script. On each turn, the code attached to this block will execute for that player. Here's a player who's been programmed to run towards the ball on their turn. Click on the code to see what the player does. Did you see that? The player took three turns to make it to the ball. Now, try it yourself. Let's start out by coding a striker. Your first program. This move to command moves the player one tile towards the ball. Each turn, the on turn command will run the player's code. It will stop running after the first action. If no code is attached, nothing will run. Nice shot! Now let's continue. You can press try again to like kind of keep on practicing, but I'm gonna continue since I'm. Nice! Your striker has the ball. Code your striker to shoot the ball to the goal. The shoot command makes the player kick the ball towards the opponent. So essentially, shoot the ball makes. Everybody knows what shoot is, but I'm gonna explain it anyways. Shoot makes. Nice shot! The same thing, you can try again or continue. If and else. It's important to help your players decide which action to do during their... Making a decision based on something is called conditional logic. For example, how does your striker know when to shoot? Here's a simple conditional block to help decide. On the player's turn, the code checks if the player has the ball. If so, the player shoots the ball to the goal. What if you want the player to do something else when they don't have the ball? Here's a more advanced conditional block. As before, if the player has the ball, they shoot. Else, or otherwise, the player moves towards the ball. Let's try it out. Your striker can only do one action on each turn. Code the striker to shoot if they have the ball. 
or else move towards the ball if they don't have it. This if-else flow block runs the code inside the if, if the parameter is true. Otherwise, the code inside the else runs, returns true if the play. So, we do that. I have the ball is if he has um, the ball in his space where he can kick it or shift side to do a cut or whatever. But we haven't done that in advance. Awesome. Now let's continue. Now, let's code player 2, your team's defender. This player will assist your striker who is already coded to score. Code the defender to pass the ball to the striker. This pass 2 command makes the player kick the ball to the nearest teammate. Nice shot! Yes. Oh no, an opponent is in the way. Code your defender to pass the ball to the striker if the ball can reach them. Else, or otherwise, move towards center field to get a better shot. Center. This move to command moves the player to the center of the field. Returns true if the kick can reach a goal or player. Returns false if there is another player in the way. You did it! Let's continue. Now, let's tie everything together. If the defender has the ball, handle the pass as before. Otherwise, move the defender to get the ball. So now we just need to move this block. He's not right. Great job! To control your players more precisely, use direction blocks to tell them where to go. With these blocks, you can tell a player to move in a specific direction. Up, down, left, or right. Click on the blocks to see how they make the player move. Click on me when you're finished. So, it'll make it go up a little bit, down a little bit, left a little bit, and right a little bit. Now, we have to move this Some conditions also use directions. Use these condition blocks in an if statement to check where the ball is relative to a player. This can help your players react more effectively to things that happen on the field. Let's use some direction blocks now. Now, let's code the goalie, player one. The goalie on a soccer team needs to prevent the ball from entering the goal. Program the goalie to move up if the ball is above them and move down if the ball is below them. Returns true if the ball's position on the field is below the player. Returns true if the ball's position on the field is above the player. Returns the direction corresponding to the top of the field relative to the screen. Returns the direction corresponding to the bottom of the field relative to the screen. You did it! Okay. 
Once the goalie has caught the ball, pass it to a teammate. Awesome! Continue. So now, defender, goalie. Now we're on the versus match. So now, you can just have hands off on everything and let your, your code hopefully destroy the other team. Now we're on level two. Welcome back. Are you ready to take your players to the next level? Yes. You can empower your players with special techniques, such as sprinting or tackling, or code your players to check how close they are to the ball or an opponent. These techniques can help your team gain an edge in their matches. Let's see this code in action. Let's improve your virtual players, starting with the striker. There's an opponent in the way. Code the striker to move up if they don't have a clear shot at the goal. This kick towards command kicks the ball in the direction of the opponent goal. Unlike the shoot command, the player will kick even if there is an obstacle in the way, like an opponent. Great job! Let's continue. This time the opponent is blocking the defender's pass to the striker. Code the striker to move to an open position to receive the ball. Returns true if any teammate has the ball. This move to command moves the player to an open position. Great job! Let's continue. Sprinting. Ooh, this could be Sprinting fun. is a powerful technique and it should be used with care. The Sprint 2 block lets a player move quickly across the field, twice as fast as the Move 2 block. But a player can't sprint every turn. A player must wait a few turns before they can sprint again. Use this conditional block to check if the player is able to sprint. Here are two players. The first is coded to sprint all the time, and the second is coded to sprint only when they can. Notice how the first player gets worn out? Always make sure your player is able to sprint before you program them to sprint. Otherwise, they'll lose their turn. Now, let's give your striker an edge by teaching them to sprint. Code the striker to sprint to the ball if they can. Otherwise, move to the ball normally. Returns true if the player has enough stamina to sprint. This sprint to command moves the player two tiles in the best path towards the ball. Nice shot! 
Let's continue. Tackling. Ooh, this is gonna be hard. Here's another important technique to understand. Tackling to steal the ball from the opposing team. The tackle block will make your player attempt to steal the ball from a nearby opponent. Getting the ball away from an opponent is tricky. Your player's tackling attempt might not work every time. Click on the block to make your player try to tackle. Keep trying until it works. Nice work! A player can only tackle if they are next to an opponent who has the ball. Players can't tackle from a distance. The can tackle block returns true only if the player is able to tackle. Click on this code to run it and see what happens. Now let's improve the defender. Let's teach the defender a new technique. Tackling. Code the defender to try to tackle if they can. It does this tackle command. Attempts to steal the ball from a close opponent. It does not work on teammates. Returns true if the player can steal the ball from an opponent. Use this with the tackle command so that you never waste a turn. Awesome. Now that the defender knows how to tackle, combine this technique with the defender's previous code. Code the defender to try tackling if they don't have the ball. You've already seen blocks that let a player move towards a certain point on the field or pass to a nearby player. Sometimes you want even more control. That's when value blocks can help. For example, with these blocks, you can refer to a specific teammate or opponent. This might be useful if you always want your defender to pass to your striker. For example, your striker is always teammate three. Or you could assign your defender to cover the opposing striker, who will always be opponent three. Here are a few examples of using value blocks in your code. Click on these code snippets to see where the ball goes. Click on me to move on. There are many more value blocks than this, too. Feel free to try them out. Uh-oh, the defender is closer to the goalie than to the striker. This time, specify the striker, player three on your team, when you code the defender to pass the ball. Returns the teammate with the specified number. In this case, the number is three. Nice shot! Okay. So far, you've used simple conditions like can sprint and can tackle. What else is possible? With a little bit of math and logic, you can combine these conditions together or even make your own conditions. These complex conditions are called expressions. Here are some blocks that return numbers such as how far away two things are from each other or how many players are in an area. If you plug these values into an equality or inequality, you get a condition you can use in your code. Just like that. These expressions will return true or false, so you can use them in if or if else statements. Use these conditions to do clever things, like sprint for the ball if it's near the player or get to an open position if there are too many opponents nearby. You can also combine expressions together. For example, this AND block returns true only if the conditions on both sides are true. 
This is a great way to control your code more precisely. Experiment with expressions and see what you can come up with. Let's improve the goalie. If a ball's getting close, code the goalie to sprint to catch it. Remember, a player can't sprint every turn. Use AND to have the goalie sprint only if they're able. Returns true if the first value is less than 3. Returns the distance in tiles from Excellent! If the goalie sprints too much, they might end up far from the goal. Reset your goalie's position if they're not doing anything else. This Move to Command moves the player one tile towards their own team's goal. You did it! Player skills. Nice work on your coding cup, players. Now that you've coded them, fix some skills for them. Skills will affect how good a player is at doing certain things in the game. You only have 10 skill points to spend per player, so choose wisely. Allocate all 10 points across all three players to move on. Player one is the goalie. The most important job for the goalie is to stop the ball from reaching the goal. So make sure to give your goalie points in defense. Oh, oh we only have 10, so we should do this one. Player two is the defender. A defender's main jobs should be intercepting the ball and passing it to the striker. Consider putting points into kicking and tackling, but only if you're using the tackle block. Player 3 is the striker. The striker's main task is to score. So try giving your striker points in kicking to score more easily, or in sprinting to get into position faster. Done. Good. Okay, guys, we have finished this. The, all the assessments so bye guys hope you enjoyed today's video don't forget to subscribe and see you next time